Uh, hello everyone and welcome back. In this video we are going to talk about data concurrency. And uh, well, first of all, what is data concurrency? It is a situation when we have two or more uh, clients that are working with the same data. Uh, for example, let's say that I have uh, this situation. Let's say that this window is one client. Okay, and I'm going to open my application again. And this one represents the second client. So they are both working with the same uh, database that is located, located somewhere on a network or on a shared uh, folder. Okay, and uh, let's say that this uh, client here changes this record, adding something, for example, number one. Okay, so he changed the name of the book to uh, the passage one, right? But this client here is not aware of that change, nor any other client uh, that has previously opened uh, the database using this application. So they don't see the change. Uh, so if they try to uh, modify this record, for example, saying to this, and they will get this error. A row cannot be updated, uh, cannot be located for updating. Some values may have been changed since it was last read. So it pretty much says that uh, somebody else already changed something in this record and you are not allowed to uh, do any more changes before you see the actual real state of the record. Okay, so that is the protection that is uh, from the database itself, uh, which pretty much uh, protects the end user from uh, changing or editing the record that is uh, that has been already changed somewhere else. So what we would need to do is to simply refresh the entire data set or simply well, run the application again, right? And when we run it again, we see we have the actual change here. So our question is how to deal uh, with this data concurrency, uh, because when you have data concurrency, we always need to know if, some, if uh, someone already changed the record and uh, how to approach this problem, right? And let's say that this one, okay, so it's the same thing, right? Now this client is not aware of the changes that are made by this client. So, like I said, these are, uh, these are two clients that are on the same computer, but uh, that doesn't really matter because they can be on some other computers as well. Uh, the only thing that is important that they are both using the same database, uh, in this case, my base here, okay? Uh, so, what I have here uh, is an example on how to deal with data concurrency. And uh, when I run this here, okay, and I'll run this again. So, these are the two, two clients and I'm going to change here to one from the first client, okay. And the second client is not aware of, of that change, right? So, if he tries to change something somebody already changed this record try again and what happened in the background is that my data set is already refreshed and as you can see now this client is aware of the last changes that are made by this client or any other client right so if i try to uh, change the record again now i can change it because i'm aware of the last changes that were made on this record but now this client is not aware of the changes that are made by this client. And if he tries to uh, uh, change something right now, he gets the error that somebody already changed this record. Also, I can, for example, delete this record. Okay. And if this user now he's not aware that this record is deleted, he can, for example, try to change it. Now I get somebody already deleted this record, right? So that is very uh, useful to know what actually happened. Uh, was the record changed or was it deleted? And if it if it is changed or deleted to automatically uh, refresh the data set uh, to see the latest changes from all clients. How did we do that? Well, in order to do that, you uh, need to do uh, a bit different approach uh, when using uh, uh, other tables. And what I did is pretty much I said, uh, okay, here is the code. I wrote two functions that pretty much helped me in this issue. First one is the read table. 
So this function here pretty much uh, reads the table in a way that, uh, uh, okay, so I connect to my ADO connection, okay, I open a table, meaning I uh, read all the records from that table, and when I did this operation here, all the records are in my uh, memory, okay, and once I have those records in my memory, okay, I can disconnect from the ADO connection and then close the connection itself. That is how I uh, save resources because some databases are limited by the actual number of connections, right? This way we simply read our data and then disconnect, okay? Uh, what I did uh, to achieve that is uh, also to... You must use the log type uh, batch optimistic, okay? So it is very important. Bet batch optimistic uh, pretty much says that uh, the updates to the actual database will be done manually, not automatically, because uh, like we saw in this code here, we don't use uh, the permanent connection to the database, okay? So this is not active. We just connect to a database when we need something, okay? We need to read the data and then disconnect. I don't need the connection anymore, okay? So, uh, we use this log type batch optimistic, don't use active, okay? And what I'll do is I'm having here event on my form that pretty much says read table, okay? Read table from ADA table one using the ADA connection one. ADA table one, ADA connection one, okay? And this read table is just the function that I described to you right now. So, uh, what is the next step? That is how we initially, when creating a form, we initially read all tables that we need to uh, read, right? And uh, what I pretty much say is, uh, when I need to connect to my database, I need to connect to my database when I read something, and I already uh, did that on form create, uh, but I also need to connect to my database after I post something, meaning after I uh, changed some record or after I deleted one. And uh, in both of those cases, I will use my update function. It will pretty much update the ADA table one. Uh, primary key in that table is ID. Uh, this information, I use it to simply identify if uh, the record still exists, okay? So maybe uh, the record was not changed, but it was deleted. And by looking at the ID of that record, I will uh, identify to see if that record still exists, right? So, like I said, I will update the ADA table one, uh, which has the ID as primary key, and uh, it uses the ADA connection to connect to database, right? So, what is the update function? And the update function is what really does the job. I really uh, needed a lot of time to actually uh, how to say, uh, do it correctly, because what this function does, it uh, opens the connection, okay, to the actual database, opens the table, and it tries to update all records that your client committed, okay? So uh, this update batch will simply try to transfer all the updates that you did to the actual database, right? And then it will pretty much refresh your data set as well. And uh, if we uh, get any of those errors, uh, meaning uh, like in this case, uh, when we changed here something and the other client was not aware, if we get any of these error messages, so what we are going to do is to analyze them so let's see, row cannot be located for updating. So one of the me messages that can appear is duplicate values. So if that happens, user will get this error message and it will cancel the update, right? If it gets the message, uh, some values have been already changed since it was last read. Okay, so this is the one. What it will do, it will 
read the table again, meaning it will refresh all changes that are made by other clients. And then it will try to uh, see if that record that you were trying to update is already deleted. That is why we needed the ID. Okay, and if he cannot find that record that you were trying to update, it will say somebody already deleted this record, right? And uh, if the record is not deleted, then it's obviously changed like we saw in our previous demonstration. And if it is something else, it's uh, well displayed here, right? Then again, after we updated everything, then again, kill the connection and uh, close it simply to save the resources. So guys, that's uh, how it's done. And uh, hmm. as you can see, it is very useful and I do it in, uh, I would say, any of my serious programs. So as we saw when we run this uh, up application two times, meaning uh, if we simulate two clients, this one saves and this one tries to edit that. Okay. And if this one deletes the record and this one tries to edit it, somebody already deleted this record. And that's how it's done, guys. Uh, I hope that you will be able to uh, understand what I did in this in this code. It's pretty much uh, what you need to do is to write these two functions. First one that will read the table inside the memory. And the second one that will actually try to update all the uh, all the changes that you have made in your client. And in order to use both of those functions, you simply need to use this after delete and after post, which are going to call my update, right? And you are going to read the initial data on form create by using a read table. So guys, that's it. Uh, I hope uh, this makes some sense to you, but uh, like I said, it is very, very useful to me and every application that I do that, rec uh, that uses databases has uh, these two functions and they are used to, uh, well, to handle the multi-user environment and data concurrency. Thank you guys for watching and well, like always, see you later.